we are able to calculate NPV, BCR, NKR and IRR by using the Microsoft Excel and certain functions in it. Furthermore, we can try to elaborate our understanding of a few functions that can help us to better view and better interpret these values. Primarily, we resort to the conditional formatting option that allows us to have a certain sort of uh, format of various cells depending upon their values. For example, you can see in this uh, set of uh, cells that values that are zero, they don't have any formatting. But ones that are positive, they have a certain pale color in the background and they are written in brown color. And values that are negative are written in red color and they have a pink background. This in increases the readability because in this net uh, benefit stream, we can clearly see that the negative values are neg uh, having certain color and then we have a different color. So this is um, uh, good for us to better view and understand the given data. Um, how we can do it, we can simply all uh, select all of these cells and go to the conditional formatting. Uh, there are many options here, out of which we will uh, resort to one of them, that is highlight cell rules. So it will uh, give a certain uh, va uh, format to cell depending upon its values. We can also rank values from top 100 or bottom 100 items or 10% items or 10 items. We can uh, uh, make some data bars of the given data. We can color the scales and we can develop some icons depending upon the increase or decrease of the values. And if we want to declare a new rule, we can click this and we can get a certain dialog box. And if we want to clear the rules, uh, that we have already developed, we can do it from here. Uh, if you want to remove the rules only from the selected cells, we can do it from here. And if you want to remove the rules from the entire sheet, we can do it from here. Since I have already declared the rules, I'm just going to show you uh, the rules that I have already developed from this option where we do the manage rules option. So when I click it, I get this dialog box, which is conditional formatting rules manager in which uh, we have the option of uh, uh, you know working on the current selection rules or other rules that are applied on other cells. Uh, I can delete a certain rule from here. This can be deleted simply by clicking this button. I can change their order just like I did and I can also uh, edit the rules or I can declare a new rule. Um, new rule or edit a rule has certain uh, dialog box that I can see here. Format all the cells based on their values. This is one option. We can assign different formats based upon the values. And uh, in this option, we op op format only those cells that have a certain value. For example, in this case, I want to assign a certain format to a certain cell. Um, and not to any other cell. So this is the most suitable out of the options that I have. For the top or bottom ranked, I can choose either of these. So uh, I can survey all of these, but the most important and most relevant in this case is this one because it considers the cell value and considers if it is greater or smaller or equal to a certain value and then assigns a certain format to it. So the cell value uh, if it is greater than zero, then I should format it with a uh, color of font brown and a uh, color fill in the background as the pale. When I do it OK, then it, it gets applied and you can see this is that rule. And it clearly says that cell value if it is greater than zero, if it is positive. This uh, box also guides us that uh, the rule is applied to all of these values because any one of these values can be in that situation where it becomes positive and definitely its format should be uh, made specific. Now the other rule was if I double click it or click the edit button I will get this and in this again I am going to resort to the same option. Cell value in this case should be less than zero and if it is so the fill in the color uh, cell should be pink and the font should be uh, red or somewhere close to brown. But when we do this, we'll get this format and if I OK it, it is now applicable 
to all of these cells because now we have uh, seen the highlight it is applies to it means that it will be applied to all those cells that we have selected so now we apply it and we say okay so this is the outcome because uh, wherever there is zero there is no format for example if i change it to zero the format will be gone and at the same time you saw the value here was negative became negative and the format also changed just like this it became zero it became out of format this became negative and it had a, a, and it developed a certain format so now let's uh, convert this positive value into a negative value it turns negative and all those values that have turned negative they have adopted that certain format that we assigned and i can turn this negative value into positive and see the effect yes it becomes uh, uh, in in a different uh, font uh, color that is uh, brown color and uh, the uh, color in the background also changes same happens to this because it has also turned positive so we can clearly see that the rule now is working and it is now more readable for example if i change this to uh, zero this value will turn negative or for example if i convert this to zero this value will become neg negative it means that previously it was a conventional stream of net benefits but now it is an unconventional stream because in the last uh, year the uh, net benefits have turned negative so it's not as per the conventional stream where the um, uh, negative values appear in the beginning only during the construction phase and then they remain become positive so this unconventional uh, stream is now visible uh, easily so this is another benefit of uh, conditional formatting that we can be uh, um, savvy of the fact that we are dealing with a conventional stream or an unconventional stream. So we recover the original values here and we now agree that conditional formatting can make things more readable and hence understandable for us. Now another tool we can use in this project appraisal exercise to make things more interpretable is the simple formula of ifs. This function is now available in Excel. Previously, it was if, and in that we applied ifs with the if in another if. So it was a nested if process, but now it is not so. We have ifs uh, which combines uh, more than one uh, logical test or conditions and gives us the response or output to that. And then we can replicate this for any number of conditions and their responses which means that we don't have to may, uh, write the nested if which always has uh, have been a problem for the programmers and we will be resorting only to this one function that will allow us to put in as many conditions as we want to so if i read these conditions it says that if the value of npv which is in age 14 column uh, cell if it is positive greater than zero it should say that feasible project is there if it is equal to zero definitely the project analyst should be indifferent because it's neither positive nor negative neither beneficial nor um, uh, wasteful and if it is that is the ne negative npv values negative it should be considered an infeasible project so let us see the um, uh, precision of this formula let's make it zero when in my kit zero it becomes project analyst may be indifferent and if I make it a positive value, it, it says it's a feasible project. When I say that it is uh, a negative NPV, then it becomes an infeasible project. So the formula works fine. We have verified it. And now we come to the other formula, that is the formula of PCR. In this, we apply the same formula, that is a function. But definitely, we have to compare it with some other um, value, that is 1, because it's a ratio it should be compared with 1. So if BCR is greater than 1, it means that we have a feasible project. If it is equal to 1, then it's um, project analyst may be indifferent. And if it is less than 1, then it is infeasible project. Uh, this is the theory that we have already understood about BCR. So let's see if it really works. Um, let's make it 1. So it becomes a uh, situation where the project analyst is indifferent. If it is less than 1, it becomes an infeasible project and for 1.5 it becomes a feasible project um, this seems like one but actually it's not because uh, it has some uh, non-zero decimal places after these four 
decimal places. So this is also tested. If VCR is correct, then we can replicate this formula for NK ratio. And you can see that we are um, considering the value of NK ratio and comparing it with one, just like we did for VCR. And here it is happening again. And it is happening again here, right? So let's see if it is really correct. One precisely one if it is the value, the project analyst will be indifferent. If it is less than one, then it will be an infeasible project. In case of value greater than one, it should be a feasible project. For So this formula is also correct. It holds correct, technically sound. And now for the final thing that is IRR, we can compare it with the opportunity cost of capital OCC and we have found it to be 26.57 uh, you know that we have to compare it with the opportunity cost of capital so we chose this cell to put the value of OCC that is opportunity cost of capital and we have substituted it uh, as 12 so we can compare this value of opportunity cost of capital with IRR and for that what we do is uh, let's experiment uh, and also verify the formula. In this case, we have to compare the value of IRR with the value of opportunity cost of capital, which is in cell B2. And if IRR is uh, greater than opportunity cost of capital, it should be considered a feasible project. If IRR is equal to the uh, opportunity cost of capital, should be considered a project where the analyst is indifferent and if it is an IRR which is less than BC uh, opportunity cost of capital OCC then it should be considered an infeasible project this is the standard theory of IRR and its interpretation let's see that how uh, it, this formula works um, so let me assume that the IRR is 12 percent and in that case the answer would be this that the project is indifferent let me put a value less than 12 it will be 11 for example it becomes an infeasible project so uh, it gets clear that if IRR is 11 percent uh, the opportunity cost of 12 percent we should not go for this project and if the IRR is 13 percent then it is greater than the 12 percent opportunity cost of capital and it becomes a feasible project so in this way we are able to um, interpret the uh, discounted measures of project worth in a very easy way we can say that it's an automated way of interpretation simply by using the ifs for a function in the uh, Microsoft Excel um, this will allow us to uh, make our interpretation easy and precise and from practical or professional point of view such spreadsheets can be very valuable for any project analyst Thank you.